I can't believe I'm actually gonna do this. This is crazy. Grab a drink, you guys. I am about to tell you why I left my GI job. So in order to talk about it, I feel like we have to start from the very beginning. So I got a job as a gastroenterology nurse practitioner in September of last year, September of 2022. Hey, Bubba, this is not for you, okay? Can I sit down? Okay. Honey, we can't have you panting this whole time. Why don't you go outside? Go outside. So I got a job as a GI nurse practitioner in September of 2022 with a very large hospital company in Florida and I was super excited. I had never worked like specifically at a GI office before but I worked in gastroenterology as a nurse. Like I worked on a post-surgical unit which was very GI heavy. We did a lot of like colectomies and like a lot of surgeries to remove the gallbladder, remove the appendix, that type of stuff. So I felt like decently, like I felt like I kind of knew what was going on in that world. Um, and so I started in October and the deal was, is I was going to be getting credentialed for three months. So I was going to be working as an RN and they would do my credentialing period, but I was going to be training as an NP. And I was, I started, I believe on like October 10th or something like that. And I like went through the credentialing process and it was honestly so annoying. I felt like their credentialing office was terrible. They would ask me to do the same paperwork a hundred times and I'd be like, I already did this. Like, are you guys sure that you need me to do it again? Or like, do you need me to resend it? Whatever. That's like a whole separate issue. But anyway, they had issues with this one doctor. My biggest thing that I noticed when I first started this job is that none of the NPs and PAs were doing what I thought that we were going to be doing. So none of them were running their own clinic. They were all like seeing the patient before the doctor. So they would go in, get the HPI, do an exam, go out, give report to the doctor, and then the doctor would go back in and then the APP advanced practice provider would finish the chart. And I was like, this is weird. Is this how it always is? And a lot of the APPs are like, yeah, this is how it always is. And I was like, have you guys ever like thought about this before that this is odd? Cause this is not, <laughs> this is like not, I don't get it. Um, so about like three or four weeks in, I talked to my manager and I was like, I don't really want to be like running clinic with the doctors. I'm fine with doing a double clinic where like I see half and they see half, but what's the point? Like of doing of being a nurse practitioner if i'm not going to actually be like putting to work like the like using my brain essentially because i can go in to the room and get the hpi and do all of that stuff i can do that as a nurse not saying that nurses don't use their brain but they do but we don't like as a nurse you don't use it in the same way of like oh i need to prescribe this medication i need to send this like we need to get this imaging that's not like the nursing thought process um it is as a nurse practitioner but not like as a registered nurse so anyway, I was talking to my manager and she was like, yeah, totally. Like the plan is for you to be running your own clinic at this other office um, with these three GI providers. You're going to be the APP for that office and like you will see their patients, whatever. So in like November, I start training over there specifically. And the minute that I met this one doctor that... Um, was an advanced gastroenterologist brilliant like an amazing doctor but yeah you guys will hear more but the moment that I met them it was give me your phone number let's get you signed like on so that you can sign orders for me and um, let me get you hooked up with this company that I use this company this company this company um, and then bring me all of like the path pathology from the latest EGDs and colonoscopies and we can go over them and meaning as in we can go over them so that we can give them their results and I was like okay well this is like my first day with you I'm I've been working at this job for like three weeks I'm very uncomfortable I don't really know what I'm doing um I'm I'm not ready for that yet and she was like oh like it's fine like let's just do it so 
And that was the reason why they didn't put me over there originally because they knew that the minute that I was going to meet that doctor that I was gonna get overwhelmed because every, doc every APP that had worked with them before stopped working with that person. So, and that was not a part of my job description to be one provider specific APP. So anyway, I'm like, okay, this is fine. Like I'm, I'm gonna figure this out, I can do this. So fast forward until December and December 5th was my first day on my own and, but on my own as in working with a doctor by myself, like together running clinic. So doing the same thing that I talked about where I would go in, get the HPI, do the ROS and um, the physical exam, then go out, give this doctor a report, and then we would go in there together and I would scribe the whole thing. And I had so many meetings with like my upper management being like, this is not what I want to do. I need to know a plan. Like what's the plan for when I'm going to be like running my own clinic by myself? And they're like, when you're credentialed, when you're credentialed. By this time, my credentialing date was supposed to be like December 30th or something like that. And so I was like, okay, fine. Right. Prayers and sorrows because my phone died. I mean, my camera died. <laughs> so I had to go charge it really quick. Um, but where were we? So I think we were in December. Um, and I was working by myself, not by myself, but you understand that when I say by myself, meaning that I was no longer like having another APP with me with the doctor, I was not seeing patients by myself. I never ever saw patients by myself in this span of me being working there. So anyway, that after Christmas break, Christmas break was for me like, eh, I, I just felt like something was wrong. Like if I'm being completely honest, I just kind of, I had, I just had this feeling where I'm not going to be in this job for very long. I just, you know, when you just kind of like feel something like that, that's how I felt about that job. And it really like came to fruition around Christmas break when I had been working with this one doctor for like two or three weeks. And that doctor would text me like after hours, ask me to put orders in. I was doing everything for this doctor in particular. I was prepping charts for, for them. So I was prepping charts for them. I was putting in orders. I was refilling medications all under their name. Like everything that you would imagine that an office nurse does, I was doing it. And again, I had like so many meetings with my managers being like, this is not what I want to do. And then, so the end of December, I was supposed to be fully credentialed. Well, they moved it back until January 30th. And so then I was going to have another month of doing exactly what I was doing. And I thought that that's kind of how the managers were getting away with telling me that I was going to, yes, I was going to be the nurse practitioner for this location. I was going to have my own schedule, blah, 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 blah. So, um, all of January, we moved, we moved to another office location and I was working there full time and I was doing everything. I was doing prior authorizations. I was working directly with this doctor's MA, um, seeing patients like two to three days a week and then taking care of like calling patients, talking to them about results, like literally everything that an office nurse would do, not a nurse practitioner. Um, and I it all came to a head when I had like had enough and I went to my manager, another manager actually, because Fun fact, my manager, like the one who hired me, got fired. Um, so I had another manager <laughs> that I was like communicating with and I was just like, this is not working. So we sat down and we we're like, okay, we're gonna have a meeting with the two doctors who are at the location that you're gonna be at and you, and we are going to like kind of hash out, like what do they want? What do they see you doing? What do you see you doing? And how do we go from there? So this was February. So we sit down to have the meeting and um, me to me to manager. There, we had a lot of managers. Okay. Like I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know. Their title definitely wasn't manager, but they were like director of operations. I don't know. Managers to me, like, I don't know their full titles. Um, but there was a lot of higher up. So it was me, um, the doctor who had just finished her fellowship who were in person along with two managers. And then there was the director of operations and like the, a big honcho guy. 
and the other doctor that I had been working primarily with over Zoom. And we're all on my computer doing Zoom, okay? So like there's four of us, four of us in an office and we put the Zoom on my computer. So it says April Fog. Um, right when you log in and we're all talking and I'm expressing my concerns and expressing how I want to see patients and I feel like I didn't go to school to just be a scribe or to be a nurse like there's no point blah blah blah, blah. and this other doctor that I had been working with primarily gets on the zoom and starts like talking like I'm not in the room which I don't know how they did that because you can quite literally see that it says like April fog is in the meeting. So anyway, they just must not have been paying attention. And they said that I was very intelligent, but I was not compassionate. I like wasn't compassionate with the patients and they didn't, I'm trying to remember what else they said that I wasn't compassionate with the patient that like I was very intelligent. One of like the best, like one of the best APPs that they had had, but I just wasn't compassionate and like I didn't feel that passion for GI and that doctor was kind of concerned that I would not like stay there for too long. And honestly, I think those were valid concerns because I had expressed those to that doctor that I just felt like, what am I doing here? I'm very scribe-esque, whatever. And a lot of my complaints were specifically about that doctor because that doctor thought that I was her personal assistant, essentially, like would text me all the time to put in orders. They'd be in endoscopy and ask me to put in orders for a patient that they're doing an endoscopy on. I'm like, I don't even know this patient. Like, I'm not your nurse. I'm not like, that's just not how it works. And I know that some people like in the world of mid-level APPs, whatever you want to call us, some people do work like that. That's never what I wanted to do. I've never seen that in practice before. I worked at this job. So anyway, she comes on the meeting and says, like, starts saying that stuff about me, like knowing good and well that I, well, I, she obviously didn't know I was in the meeting. She didn't. So I'm in the meeting and literally everybody who's had, who is in the room turns and looks at me immediately. And I'm like, she talking about me. And anyway, so they just go on and like everybody's talking and one of the director of operations like kind of brings up that I'm in the meeting and like we're just talking about what I want to do, whatever. So we just kind of breeze over that. Nobody says like, well, maybe you should talk to April directly about that if you have those concerns because she's here. I don't know. It was so weird and awkward. So then afterwards, we get off the Zoom and I talk to my managers and they can tell that I'm very upset. I've never been called not compassionate in my life. Like I'm, I'm a very compassionate person. Like I've been working in healthcare for six years and I've never been called that before. So it was very hurtful to me and I was very upset and my managers like direct managers could tell that I was very upset and they were just like you really need to consider if this is the job that you want to do because this is not going to change like this is how it is to work with this one specific doctor and they were super nice about it and they were just like if you just consider if this is what you want to be in because you can ask for a transfer like we will support you because we don't we want the best for you which was very nice and literally the next day actually it wasn't even the next day because i haven't i forgot about the rest of the story so i was like okay i'm gonna go home and think about it i was very upset in the car at home that's where i made that one tiktok where I was like i'm just gonna take a break because i just need a second to like figure out what i'm gonna do and i was like crying to my husband like that night and he was like you know being very kind whatever and then i took a shower I got out of the shower and I got a text message from this particular person, this particular doctor, and I'm gonna read it to you. And this is what this is what it says. This is a text message that I received. It says the Dunning Kruger effect, a type of cognitive bias where people with little expertise or ability assume they have superior superior expertise or ability. This overestimation occurs as a result of the fact that they don't have enough knowledge or know they don't have enough knowledge. And that hit me like a pound of bricks because as a new grad nurse practitioner, like I know that there's things that I don't know, obviously, like I'm not stupid. I know that there are things that I don't know and I'm not trying, sorry, my dogs. I'm not trying to overstep. I was literally asking to see EGD and colonoscopy follow-ups. There are clear guidelines on colonoscopy follow-ups and EGD follow-ups, I'm sorry, like it's easy. 
that's the patients that I was asking to put onto my schedule because those patients were having EGDs in September and not getting their results until December because the doctor's schedules were so booked up. So that's the point of having an advanced practice provider is to extend care, to have more care for patients. So that's what I was asking for. I was not asking to see complex patients. I was asking to see low hanging fruit patients. Um, so after I got that text message, I blocked that doctor's number immediately. I texted my managers and said, I am done working with her. I will no longer be working there. The fact that my dogs are barking is like <laughs> not helping this situation. Camper, stop. And they texted me and were like, oh my God, we're so sorry. And I was like, I'm, I need to take the day off tomorrow. Um, so I did. And then they got me in contact with the, what was her, even her title? She was like the nurse or the advanced practice provider, like liaison or something like that. I had, Grant, I never met her before. Like never met this person who is supposed to be the, li the liaison between doctors and nurses and like in the entire company. I've never met her. She's so nice though. Um, I, she reached out to me and she was like, I'm so sorry. You should never have to go through that. Like, let's get you transferred. And I put in a transfer request. I reported that doctor to HR. I talked to my upper, upper management and told them I wanted to transfer. And they removed me from that office situation, put me back in the Tampa office location and were like, you are gonna work here primarily. You're not gonna have any contact with that doctor and um, we're gonna transfer you. <laughs> and so I started looking at open positions within the company and we had a few meetings about transferring. Honestly, they were just like so bad about getting back to me. Like every, I would have to email them constantly like, okay, what's the update on transferring? I had a meeting with HR and they were like, well, we can't disclose what we're gonna do, but we will do something, whatever. I never heard back about that either. Um, and then basically, <laughs> Like three weeks went by and I was told that there were a couple primary care positions open. There was like a vascular surgery position open um, and that they were gonna reach out to those positions and see what kind of nurse practitioner they were looking for. But essentially that dragged on for like four weeks, I wanna say. And at the time I was actively looking for other jobs um, because the process was like so weird. Like why can't you just transfer me? Like this is a problem, this is a company problem. Like your doctor, literally bullied me <laughs> like one of your anyway i i don't want to get into that but they essentially just never transferred me um i sat in that closet <laughs> that closet office for like four weeks and still continued to do all of that doctor's work as a nurse i like got credentialed and whatever but i never ended up using it and um i would just communicate with her through like papers. I would literally like print off EGD and colonoscopy reports. I would write like on the papers and stuff and I would give it to my manager to give to her and then they she would give it back to me to deal with like what, what I needed to deal with with that. So it was stupid and a waste of time, a waste of literally like five months for me as a nurse practitioner. Um, but yeah, so they finally eventually told me like, hey, we, the, the primary care positions that they had open, they one was like a 3 to 11 p.m. shift and I was gonna be the only nurse practitioner there so they were like, we really want somebody who has experience. And then the other one was like 40 minutes from my house and they really wanted somebody with experience too. So eventually they were like, we could transfer you fully to the GI office in Tampa but that's all that we have. And I was like, no, because I don't wanna be a scribe. That's what everybody in this, every APP in this office is a scribe. That's not what I want and I gave my two weeks notice then. And at that time, I did not have a job set up. I had interviewed with my current job, um, or I was going to interview with them, I believe, um, but I did not have anything like actually set up. And it didn't matter to me at that point. Like I was not staying at that job, a job that obviously didn't value my education. They didn't value me as a nurse and as a provider. They didn't value how I felt about things. They didn't value anything about me essentially um, because they essentially always let that doctor walk over everybody that she worked with. And you know what, that's fine if you if that is the way that an office 
if you want to run an office that way with APPs working as scribes, that's fine. But first of all, that needs to be told like upfront in an interview because I would have never accepted that job if I knew that that was going to be the reality. That's not what I want. That's not what I wanted to do. That's it's a waste of it's a waste of an APP essentially. So that is what happened. I have absolutely no contact with anybody from that office anymore. Obviously, my managers on my last day, they wished me well and they said that like they were sorry. I mean, everybody was so sorry for the way that it turned out except for that doctor. That doctor like never apparently she had reached out to the manager saying like like oh, I should apologize, whatever like that, but at that point like I I didn't see her. I didn't talk to her ever after that point she completely degraded me as a provider and me as a person calling me not compassionate she didn't even know me like she had known me for three or four months and she was just upset that she called me something in the meeting that I was in and she didn't know that I was in it which is her fault because if she would have just looked at the zoom she would have seen my name so anyway that is what happened in my GI job you guys so <laughs> it was a hot mess it was a hot freaking mess if I'm being completely honest. I feel so settled where I am though now. I love my job. Um, I love working in primary care. I love being like the point of contact for my patients. And I love the opportunity that my current job gives me. Like I just did Botox today for the first time. I did it on my husband. I removed an IUD last week. I do procedures like skin tag removal, mole removal, injection. So it just like gives me a variance. I'm getting great experience. It's literally 10 minutes from my house and I don't know. I feel very settled in life. I feel like this is where I'm meant to be. And I'm very thankful sometimes you have to go through hard things in life to get to where you are meant to be. So yeah, I'm so grateful to be where I am. So anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for supporting me like throughout all of that stuff you guys were always there and always rooting for me always cheering for me and that really just like meant the world to me and it still does mean the world to me that you guys even care about my life so i cannot thank you guys enough i love you guys and yeah i will see you in the next video and i'm so glad that like we all know what happened now. like it's all out there we we know what happened